Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the new VR news. As always, I am Mateo 311, and this is your channel for everything VR related. Today's video is mainly about new VR games, which is exactly what we need right now, and there is a lot to be excited about. Honestly, if you're a fan of survival games, puzzle titles, interactive stories, horror games, first person shooters, mech simulators, roguelites, and even RPGs, we've got you covered today. There's also some additional information regarding quest body tracking, Meta's Horizon worlds is taking off and i'll show you how you can get discord and spotify running in the background of your quest there are of course timestamps and links down in the description but before we jump in this video is brought to you by kiwi design one of my favorite sites for vr accessories they just released some brand new quest 2 hand straps that'll give you that valve index feel and allow you to completely let go of the controllers they also have plenty of other accessories like controller weights for those of you who work out in vr cable management systems and my favorite accessory they're super durable and extra comfy quest 2 elite strap there are links down in the description and don't forget to use discount code mateo311 for five percent off and to help support this channel Okay, so I actually want to start this video off with a new segment that I'm calling the check-in. This will usually be games that I recently played through, but don't have time for a full review. Now, first on that list is the beautiful puzzle title, Unbinary. Unbinary is currently available on the Rift and Quest platforms and will be coming to Steam next month. It's a beautifully hand-drawn puzzle title where you'll have to help assist an artificial intelligence navigate the intricacies of conflicting human behavior. The puzzles are fairly easy and straightforward, but I did enjoy the storyline and it was definitely a great change of pace compared to what I'm used to. Speaking of changing paces, I got to dive back into After the Fall to check out some of the new content they recently announced. I have a video all about it releasing tomorrow, so if you're a fan of this game or you just want to see how it's progressing, you won't want to miss this video. Okay, so that was it for the check-in, and now we'll move into this week's new releases. First up is the Dark Souls-inspired RPG Soulscape. This procedurally generated RPG dungeon crawler has you utilizing a large array of spells and weapons against a variety of monstrous creatures in order to reclaim the lost fragments of your soul. You can fuse spells together for unique effects, use the environment against your enemies, or just lay the smack down with some reactive combat. This is definitely my style of game, so I've added it to my ever-growing backlog. Now, if that's too intense for you, the 30-minute interactive story Paper Birds has finally made its way onto Steam, or at least it should have. The release date is listed as February 18th, but the Steam page also says coming soon. Maybe someone just forgot to click go, but I'm sure it'll be sorted out soon enough. Paper Birds is a story of a young musician in search of inspiration, and it features the voices of Ed Norton, Joss Stone, and Archie Yates. You'll play music and interact with an invisible world, which takes on a life of its own and becomes part of you. I genuinely enjoy VR interactive stories, and it looks like this will be 30 minutes well spent. But shifting gears yet again, we have the horror title Deadness. Wake up in an abandoned building confined to a wheelchair, and your efforts to escape are going to be interrupted by some truly horrific creatures. Now the title is giving me a little bit of Outlast vibes, which I definitely loved, but horror in VR is truly next level, and I'm not sure if I can handle this game when it releases this Tuesday on February 22nd. So if you need a chill experience to forget about about deadness sam and max this time it's virtual is finally making its way to the playstation vr wednesday february 23rd now i've played through this title and enjoyed it but it's not really my style as it's just a series of different mini games with an interconnected storyline and i was never really a fan of sam and max but if you're missing this dynamic duo and you enjoy casual experiences like shooting galleries, escape rooms, and Simon Says style puzzles, well then go pick up this game. Now, if you're looking for a new VR survival title, the demo for Green Hell is dropping on Steam today. Green Hell was a highly successful flat screen title, and it looks like they're spending plenty of additional time to make sure the VR port is perfect. Well, later today, we'll be able to jump in, check out how the performance is, and see how well they've integrated motion controls. I have high hopes for this title, so let's hope it doesn't disappoint. Now, also releasing this week is some updates for Demio. Starting later today, a demo of the flat screen version will be available on Steam. So if you had some flat screen friends that you wanted to introduce to this title, now you can. And maybe later down the road, you'll have a shared cross-platform experience. Now for the VR gamers, on Thursday, February 24th, we're getting the Heroes Hangout. It's a well-done social hub that you can meet your friends in, play a few mini games together, experience the retro arcade title, The Hauntlet, which reminds me a bit of Gauntlet, get up close and personal with some of the game's amazing artwork, and finally queue up a quest for Demio. 
it's a nice little addition that most of all shows that the developers truly care about this title. Now, an update that I'm even more excited for comes for the mech shooter Vox Machina. I recently spoke about how they announced a full single player campaign for this already excellent multiplayer mech shooter, but it's also coming to the Quest with a tentative release date of March 3rd. Now, Vox Machina was ahead of its time, and I've always been interested in this title, but I've repeatedly passed on it due to the low player count, and the only experience I ever had with this game was at PAX East in 2020. They had VR booths set up and they were running large scale battles. I was casually interviewing everyone after their experience and the response was overwhelmingly positive. So hopefully between that quest release and a single player campaign, this title will finally get the credit it's due. I'm also gonna try my best to make sure I have a review up for the release day of this title. Now, another excellent title planning to release in March is Outlier. This unique combination of first person shooter, RPG and roguelike elements combined with slick VR mechanics and locomotion result in a truly unique title. After being sucked into a black hole, you'll be trapped in a never-ending loop of procedurally generated alien battles. Luckily, you'll find unique power-ups and experience different elements of the story in each life and death cycle. I'm definitely getting a little bit of Returnal vibes from this title, but with some added parkour-style locomotion. Well, we'll definitely find out more when this title releases on March 17th. And finally, we have one more huge update to one of VR's biggest titles. The No Man's Sky Sentinel update isn't specifically targeted for VR users, but there's some goodies in there for everyone. For starters, if you're using a PlayStation 4 Pro, you will get an increase in overall image quality. VR hand positions have also been modified to make combat feel a bit more natural, but after this, the updates are mainly focused on improving the game's combat. You'll be able to add an AI into your exomech, basically creating your own robot buddy, and there's two new weapon classes and a cloaking multi-tool, which will definitely help because enemy Sentinel drones have been upgraded to be more of a challenge, showing up in new varieties and larger numbers. It's been quite a while since I've played No Man's Sky, but I think this might be the perfect time to jump back in. Okay, so we have a few more stories to go over, but first, a little bit of bad news. The four-person co-op Star Trek Bridge Crew game has been delisted on Steam and the Oculus Store. Now, technically, you can still pick it up from PlayStation and the Ubisoft Store, but that might be a bit of a gamble. I recently spoke about this title in my yearly review list and placed it in the graveyard due to the dead player base, but also stated if you have three friends who definitely want to try this, go ahead and pick it up together and enjoy the experience. But even now, I can't recommend that because I'm not sure if the servers are going to remain online. Now, as a Star Trek product, it's very possible this is just a licensing issue. And for now, we'll just wait and see what happens. Now, in brighter news, it looks like Meta's social application Horizon Worlds is taking off, sort of. Maybe it's hard to tell. Mark Zuckerberg recently threw out the number of 300,000 users joining Horizon Worlds in only three months. Now, this does also include venues, but not workspace applications. But what is 300,000 users actually telling us? 300,000 people opened up the application once and never went back? The lack of statistical information from Meta is something that consistently drives me crazy. Throwing out a number like 300,000 users probably sounds great to your stockholders, but what is the concurrent user count. It could be five total people for all we know. Even with deep pocket Super Bowl ads that some people seem to love or hate, Horizon Worlds has a long way to go to catch up with Rec Room, but without more information, we don't know how large that gap truly is. Now, I personally haven't jumped into Horizon Worlds since the beta, so I can't really judge its current state, but I'm sure I'll get around to it eventually. Okay, two more quick stories to round out this video. The first one is, how would you like to have Discord or Spotify running in the background of your quest while you're doing other things? Quest Guru Basti564 can show you exactly how to do it, and I'm just gonna link you directly to his video. I recently helped Eric for President test it out, and it worked as expected. My only question is, how many Quest updates will it be before Meta breaks this? Hey Meta, here's a quick little tip. Introduce cool features like this in your updates, rather than breaking stuff we constantly use and including things most of us don't care about. Okay, so our last story is an update to the Quest full body tracking rumors that we were seeing from last week, and Meta's Vice President of Virtual Reality Andrew Bosworth has chimed in on this topic. Full body tracking is something they've been interested in for quite some time, but it's very unlikely that it could be implemented with inside out tracking and would require some type of outside in device. Basically, the whole option of body tracking is just a bit premature, but they are working really hard to implement something like leg approximation. So rather than just being a floating upper torso like you see in a lot of games, you would have legs in VR that act similar to your real life counterparts. So maybe it's not the news you wanted to hear, but it's still pretty cool. 
cool. Okay, everybody, that was today's new VR news. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. And as always, I'll see you guys on next time.